Now that we have this basic idea of concavity established, the next thing that we want to look at finding are inflection points. So inflection points are points where concavity changes. So when we were looking at finding extrema, we wanted to find where the first derivative changed from positive to negative or negative to positive. So a similar idea here, an inflection point is identified by anywhere that our function, our second derivative function, changes from positive to negative. So if we have a function that starts off as concave up, and then at some point changes to concave down, looking at our second derivative function, we should have either a zero or a point where that second derivative is undefined. Its values would be positive, where our function is concave up, and the values would be negative, where our function is concave down. Or similarly, if we had a curve that started concave down, and then at some point switched to being concave up, we'd see more or less the same information, just reversed. So inflection points occur whenever our sign chart for the second derivative changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. So we can find them by considering the behavior of our function around its critical values. So again, similar to the process for how we found local extrema. So partition, crit critical values are again partition numbers. in this case for the second derivative that are in the domain of the original function. So basically that means in order for an inflection point to exist, the original function has to be defined at that value. So we have our three cases to consider. The first is where an inflection point occurs. which again we would see because the concavity of our graph would change. Or looking at the second derivative of our function, that sign chart would change from positive to negative, or it could change from negative to positive. But what we're looking for is that change in concavity. So we might have a case where an inflection point occurs we could also have a case where concavity changes, but no inflection point occurs. So in this case, the concavity of our graph is still changing from positive to negative, but that open circle indicating the original function is undefined there means that we don't have an inflection point. So in this case, we do see that change in concavity, but f of x is undefined. So the original function is undefined at that point. And the other case would be when we have neither of those things happening. So that would be if we find a partition number for f double prime of x, and concavity doesn't change on either side. either because it's positive on both sides or negative on both sides. So in order to have an inflection point, concavity has to change, positive to negative or negative to positive. We also have to make sure the function is, is defined at that point. So we want to find intervals of concavity for the function x to the 8th plus 9x squared. So to start, we need to take the first derivative of our function which gives us 8x to the 7th plus 18x. And then we need to get the second derivative of our function. So to find a second derivative, we just take the derivative of the first derivative. So this becomes 7 times 8, or 56x to the 6th plus 18. So setting this equal to 0, 
we would get x to the sixth, or 56 x to the sixth equals negative 18, meaning x to the sixth would have to equal negative 18 over 56, which gets us back into a case where we're taking the, an even root of negative numbers. So that can never happen. So our second derivative can never be equal to zero. It's a polynomial function, so it's always defined. So in this case, there are no partition numbers to consider. So for the second derivative function, we just need to choose any point and plug that into the second derivative. So the second derivative evaluated at zero would give us zero plus 18, or 18, which is positive. Since there are no partition numbers, there's no point where our function can change concavity. So in this case, our function is concave up for all real numbers. So we would say that our function is concave up on negative infinity to infinity. And since there's no point where concavity changes, there are no inflection points.